Tanahasi Coates. <laughs> This is uh, this is it, man. I know. This is uh, this is tough for me. Okay, it's tough. You're one me. of the smartest people I know. I'm a genius, in fact. <laughs> You're in trouble. I'm in so much trouble right now. <laughs> let's uh, let's get the, let's get into this, Tanahasi Coates. Question one: Do you hate white people? <laughs> um. No, <laughs> no, of course not. I had no, to think about it. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk about this, um, the article that I read. I mean, a big fan of your book, and then you don't even take a moment out of your life. You moved to Paris, didn't you? That was the moment I was taken out of my life, to move. You that moved to it. Paris, yes. why? To take a moment out of my life, that was exactly it. The book came out and to get away for, for a little bit. And then to get back into your life, you try and lighten th things up by writing an article about mass incarceration. Right, 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 right. right in America, right. just to just to loosen up. Right, 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 right. Just right. to loosen up. Right. Explain why this is such a big issue. I know it's it's hard to explain it, but but explain why mass incarceration is such a big issue. Well, um, America is is a country that's founded on the notion of liberty, um, and at this moment right now, it is the most prolific jailer in the world. Um, Americans incarcerate uh, 700 uh, per 100,000. 700 per 100,000 of our citizens are incarcerated. Our next closest co competitor is Russia, which is around 400 per 100,000. So you're beating Russia. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? Excellent. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Um, <laughs> if you looked at African-American males, the numbers shoot up to like 4,000 per 100,000. Uh, African-American males born in this generation, one in three will spend time in prison among African-American male college dropouts, high, high school dropouts, excuse me, high school dropouts, 60% will do some time in prison. And so you're talking about a massive threat to liberty. We comprise 5% of the world's population and 25% of its incarcerated population. But now, now I mean, it's, it's such a big thing to look at and trying to delve into the source or the roots of the problem. I, I mean, reading the article was fascinating for me because I had never thought of incarceration as some sort of sinister plot. I right. never thought of incarceration. I just thought it was one of those things. Oh, there's a lot of black people in jail. That's, right. that's just it because just sort of, of where they're from. It just right. sort of happens. It's the right. luck of the draw. Right. And yet, in the article, that's not how you point it no. out. That's not how you lay it out. It seems like it was more planned than that. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And by plan, we don't mean like some sinister uh, cabal yeah. of white people sitting in a room saying, this is what we'll do next to the blacks. Yes. Um, it Although is... there is a room like that somewhere. Right, right, somewhere. Okay. just haven't found it yet. But we're not talking about them right, right, right now. Right, right, the search continues. Carry on, carry on. Right. What, what, what you're talking about is the weight of heritage and history in this country. Uh, African Americans have been in this country since 1619, since the time of slavery, uh, up through Jim Crow, up through the Civil Rights Movement, into the present. Uh, there's been a view of black people as having uh, a penchant towards criminality. Uh, slavery was justified because if black people weren't enslaved, they would immediately go about raping and robbing and pillaging. But, but now, let's say, to play devil's advocate, if somebody right. says to you, oh, but Tanahasi, black people do commit more crime. Statistically, you can see that black people commit more crime, and that's why there are more black people in jail. How do you refute that? What do you say to that? Well, the fact of the matter is uh, discrepancies in terms of crime rates for African Americans extend way back until, until, until the era of Reconstruction, at least. But this era of mass incarceration is new. Uh, we did, and also we did have a rise in crime in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. That's true, but by the early 90s, crime started dropping, and yet the rate of incarceration kept going up. And, that, and that, that, that crime rate was going up in multiple places. It wasn't just going up in America as well. I remember yes, it reading was. It was an international crime. Canada, the same That's thing was exactly happening. Right. The crime That's was going right. up, and yet America was the only country that re responded to it That's exactly in, right. in terms of mass right. incarceration. Right. The, crime, the crime rise and fall that happened in the latter half of the 20th century is not a uniquely American event. But mass incarceration is uniquely American. Our response is uniquely American, and the argument that I make in the piece is that can't be divorced from the history of white supremacy and black criminalization in this country. Let's let's talk about Moynihan. The way you the way you set this piece up was really intriguing because I honestly had no clue who Moynihan was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know why this guy was so important. And if I'm correct in in, in uh, summating that, what you said in this piece is Moynihan's writing, his memo was largely one of the pillars that they based mass inca incarceration on. Well, I, I would put it differently. Actually, I, I think uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, Moynihan was quite sympathetic to the African-American family. Uh, he argued for an, an investment in the, in the lives of African-American families, uh, a benevolent investment, 
And but, that, but that part wasn't published, though, at the time. Right, right. the solutions weren't published at the, the time. Solutions. The solutions, so he, he, were not he published. laid out the problems, yes, yes, but, but not the, the solutions, solution. hoping that people would yes. ask him for the solutions, and they never did. And they never did. They chose a different solution. <laughs> fact. You know, and the reason for that, I argue in the piece, is actually within the career of Daniel Patrick Moynihan himself. Uh, one of the very, very sad things about, you know, the history of white supremacy in this country is it's not, you know, dyed in the wool racists who often end up doing damage. If you read some of the memos, and I have them in the piece, uh, from Daniel Patrick Moynihan, and he engages in the same sort of criminalization of black people while he's working under Nixon. Yeah, this, is, this, much is, this more... is the thing that intrigued me. A lot of the time, yeah. I, in, in, the, in the short time I've read up or been in and around American politics and history, the one thing that I've always been taught is it's the, it's the conservative that is against the black man. It is the liberal who is for the black man. And then in this piece, you challenge that in a big way. You go, Moynihan was one of the biggest liberals, and yet himself and others who claim to be on the liberal Argu side... Arguably the most important piece of legislation uh, in terms of the architecture of mass incarceration is the 94 crime bill. It was passed by Bill Clinton. Uh, it was supported by, by numerous, numerous Democrats. I think two people in the Senate abstained uh, and voted uh, against, voted down the, uh, the 94 crime bill. And Bill Clinton came out and he said that he, he regrets that decision. But he made the, the decision, I guess, to put as many black people in prison or to respond with mass incarceration. He did, but with, uh, respectfully, it's easy to regret it now. Oh, that's, uh, that's deep. Everybody regrets it now, you know? Um, what was much harder at the time to speak out, you know, at that point in time, when the votes were, you know, being gathered and to say, listen, this is a bad idea. And the number of people who were in power who were willing to do that uh, were few and far between. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm having such a great time with you. I'm not going to let you go. The Atlantic, featuring Tanahasi's cover story, is on newsstands right now. Between the World and Me is in bookstores. Tanahasi quotes, everybody.